Good morning, year one and year two. Welcome to English Lessons Live with me, Mr. Phillips. We're here, it's Monday morning again, and it's time to do some writing. Um, you might notice that we're in the different setup again, I'm back in the box, which I only did last week for the reading, but actually, I found that this setup was really, really good for getting filming done and having a bit more control over what I was doing. So we're gonna try this approach this week for our writing lessons as well. Okay, so we're gonna jump straight into it. It's Monday morning. Let's start with a little bit of a spag starter. And this is our starter for today. It says, use only the words in the box below to write a statement. And it's flower, the, grow, and will. And it says, remember to use correct punctuation. So what I want you to have a little go, uh, only using those four words in the box, so I want you to have a go at writing a statement. Not a question, not an exclamation, not a command, okay? I want you to have a go at writing a statement. And don't forget, full stop at the end <laughs> and capital letter at the beginning, okay? Just using those four words. Pause the video there. And have a little go at writing that sentence for me, okay? What do you think the sentence is going to be? Off you go. Okay, have you had a little go at writing that sentence? So, what I would do is, if we've got four words like this, normally we're probably going to start off with a noun, most likely, a thing. And the noun out of all those words is flower. Now, I'm probably not just gonna say flower, we're probably gonna say the flower. So I'm gonna guess it's gonna be the flower. There we go, oh, the flower. And then we've got grow will or will grow. Will grow makes more sense, doesn't it? The flower will grow. Now, what punctuation and what capital letters am I missing from my sentence? If you're watching, you might have seen the computer try and change it for me, but I have to stop it. So where does my capital letter need to go? It needs to go right at the beginning. So hopefully yours has a capital letter right at the beginning. If it doesn't, quickly add it in now. And if we're thinking about capital letters, we're also thinking about our full stops. So where does my full stop need to go? It needs to go at the end, just like that. So your statement should look just like my statement. The flower will grow. Okay, well done. Just a nice little starter to get us thinking about our writing and our punctuation for today. So this is the picture we're going to use this week to inspire some of our writing. Take a couple of seconds just to have a little look at it over on this side. What do you think's going on? What do you predict is going on in this picture? Where is it set? Who is that character in the corner? Whose house does this belong to? What goes on inside this house? We can see from the picture it's quite a positive, quite a happy picture. There's lots of colour and the house is in a lovely beam of light and it's very welcoming and it looks very well maintained and looked after. Yeah, it's a very happy picture. It's not a scary house, it's a really nice house. And we're going to use this picture, so it says right at the bottom, you might be able to see, it says we're going to use it to write a setting description, which is a description of the place, the location, okay? That's what we're gonna to do today. And you can see here, I've put some icons. There's a nose, ears, glasses, hand, tongue, thought bubble, a speech bubble, a person running, and a heart. And these are all our nine ideas for writing. If you're ever stuck, you don't know what to write, it's going to be one of these nine ideas, okay? So the nose, reminds you that you can write a sentence about what someone smells. The ears remind you that you can write a sentence about what someone hears. The glasses remind you that you can write a sentence about what someone can see. The hand reminds you that you can write a sentence about what someone can touch or feel. The tongue 
remind you that you can write a sentence about what someone tastes. The thought bubble reminds you that you can write a sentence about what someone is thinking. The uh, speech bubble reminds you that you can write a sentence about what someone actually says. The little running man reminds you that you can write a sentence about action or what somebody does. And the heart reminds you that you can write a sentence about what someone feels. So those are the nine ideas for writing. Now you can see that I've highlighted these five today, and those are the senses, uh, smell, sound, sight, touch and taste. Um, we're probably not going to get through all five of them today, but we're going to have a little go, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to try and write five sentences, one about each of the senses. Now we're going to have a sentence about what she can smell, a sentence about what she can hear, a sentence about what she can see, a sentence about what she can touch, and a sentence about what she can taste, all based on this picture, okay? So as I'm going through, you can keep pausing it and write along with me. If you prefer just to watch the whole thing to begin with, that's absolutely fine as well. Okay, shall we begin? So our first sentence is going to be a smell sentence about what she can smell. Okay, so let's go back up to the picture. Have a little look at what she can smell. So. Have a little look at that picture. What do you think she is able to smell? Well, she might be able to smell all the grass. She might be able to smell kind of the, the odour that comes from a forest, like earthy, dirty smell. She might be able to smell something delicious cooking in the kitchen of the house. She might be able to smell the flowers. There's some beautiful flowers down in the corner, isn't there? She might be able to smell those flowers, okay? So I want you to pick what you think she can smell. I'm going to go with the flowers. I think that's what she, I'm going to write about. But obviously, you can write something different, or you can use my ideas, or we can combine ideas. So I'm going to start off with a very basic sentence. She could smell the flowers. Now, that is a little bit too simple, really. Okay, starts with a capital, ends with a full stop. It's good, she could smell the flowers. I want to see if I can make it incredible, okay? Now, if you think about smells and cartoons, sometimes the smell, you can see it drifting through the air, can't you? And it goes into the cartoon character's nose and they kind of follow it along. I kind of want to write about that idea. So the idea that the smell is kind of floating or drifting through the air. So maybe we could say the smell of the flowers drifted, drifted through the air and into the little girl's nose. Here we go. The idea that the smell is floating through the air. And you could do the smell of anything. You could do the smell of baking drifted through the air into the little girl's nose. The smell of the trees or the smell of the dirt or the smell of um, perfume or something like that. And now, potentially, I could add in a few adjectives just to really show my audience what kind of smell she had. So maybe... Um, I could describe the flowers. So I don't want to use beautiful because I feel I might need to use beautiful somewhere else. So I might describe the flowers as delicate because that's a word that means kind of like easily broken and very fragile. So the smell of the delicate flowers drifted through the air and into the little girl's nose. Perfect. Maybe I could also describe the smell. What kind of smell could we say? Again, we don't want beautiful smell. Because I might use beautiful somewhere else. Maybe, maybe, well, I'm thinking back to those cartoons. The characters are almost like hypnotised by the smell. So I might that, add that in. The hip, not hypnotic, the hypnotic smell of the delicate flowers drifted through the air and into the little girl's nose. And that is ten times better than she could smell the flowers. Now, you could use this 
for your own smell sentence. If you decided to do the baking from inside the house, you could say the delicious smell of the freshly cooked bread drifted through the air and into the little girl's nose. You can come up with your own thing if you like. I want you to have a little go at writing a smell sentence for what the girl can smell and have a go at doing what I've done and really expanding it and making it as interesting as it could possibly be. Next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do what she can hear. Now, I obviously can't hear the picture, but I could imagine what she'll be able to hear. Maybe she can hear laughing and playing coming from inside the house. Maybe she can hear insects. Or maybe, like I can hear at the moment coming from my garden, she can hear the tweeting of birds. So I think I'm going to do the birds, the sound of birds. So I'm going to write my basic sentence first. She could hear the birds. <clears throat> now I want to improve that. I want to make it ten times better. Now, when we talk about the sound birds make, we sometimes say that they're singing, don't we? So maybe I could play on that. Maybe, well, who else sings? Well, a choir sing. That's a group of people who come together and make lovely singing music. So maybe I could describe the birds as a choir. So maybe I could say a choir of birds, a choir of birds. Where could they be? Well, they're probably going to be in the branches, aren't they? But if I look back at my picture, it's really tall trees. So I could say, a choir of birds sat in the tallest trees. Um, what were they doing? Well, tweeting and singing. Oh, can't see my writing because I'm in the way. We go. Oh, nope, wrong way. Ooh. Wrong lesson, that's for, that's for the other day. <laughs> um, a choir of birds sat in the tallest trees, tweeting and singing, um, what, maybe merrily. I could do happily as well, couldn't I? But I might do for merrily. A choir of birds sat in the tallest trees, tweeting and singing merrily. I think that's quite good. If we were doing the laughing and... Um, laughing and cheering of children playing, we could say a group of children played in the back garden, shouting and laughing happily. You can see we can use the same kind of structure. If you've not used this idea of drifting through the air, you could do that for sound as well. So you could say a choir of birds sat in the, uh, in the tallest trees, they're tweeting, drifting through the air and into the little girl's ears. You can kind of use elements of these structures and put them together however you want. So there is our listening sentence. Much better than she could just hear the birds. Now I'm aware that this is a little bit more complicated than the stuff we've been doing, so don't forget you can pause at any point if you want to and have a little go. So, so far we've done a sentence about what she can smell, and we've done a sentence about what she can hear. We're now going to do a sentence about what she can see. Now, I don't know about you, there's lots of things that I can see in this picture. The main one, I think, being this, to this towering um, building in the middle. We could talk about the flowers, if you've not talked about them already. We could talk about the trees, we could talk about animals jumping around. I know we can't see any animals, but we can use our imaginations, can't we? I'm gonna talk about the building because I think it's it's so clear there in front of me that I might as well use it to describe. So I'm going to say the house. So she could see the house is my sentence. Now, I'm having a little think. When I was thinking back to cartoons before about the smell drifting through the air, when they see something they like, they like, cartoons' eyes are kind of like drawn to it, aren't they? So maybe I could use that phrase. I could say, her eyes, stop that from being bold for a second. Her eyes were drawn. And straight away, I know this is good because this sentence starts with the, this sentence starts with a, and this sentence starts with her. So all my sentences are starting with different words. So it's not going to be the same. Her eyes were drawn um, to the, more than a, house isn't it it's certainly not like my house it's more like a castle isn't it i'm gonna call it a castle 
you could call it a mansion as well. Her eyes were drawn to the castle. Um, well, maybe we could describe the castle. Maybe the magnificent um, towering castle. The towering means really tall and, and standing high above you. Her eyes were drawn to the magnificent towering castle. Maybe I could describe something particular about the castle. Maybe I could describe these kind of turrets, these spires, which are like the very top of a, of a, a pinpoint of a building, like some spires. Maybe I could talk about the windows or the decorations. Hmm. I could do, her eyes were drawn to the magnificent towering castle with its, um, Tell you what, let's get towering out of there. I'm going to use towering here. I'll put a question mark there, I don't know if I'm going to use towering spires. And that's part of writing, isn't it? Going back, having a little look what you've done, going, actually, that would work better over here. It's part of the editing process. Her eyes were drawn to the magnificent something castle with its towering spires and beautiful. This is the time, I think, um, to pull out beautiful. Yeah. Um, with its towering spires and beautiful decorations. So you can see there, I've said what you can see and then said with it and then described more. If you're doing the trees, you could say her eyes were drawn to the um, gorgeous towering trees with their um, luscious fo uh, foliage and um, aged um, bark or something like that. Foliage being like the leaves and the bark being the stuff on the outside. So can, again, you can use this structure with yours, saying she can see something and then say with it or with there and describe a bit more of it. Her eyes were drawn to the magnificent, I need another word here, maybe, maybe we could use grand, as in kind of like um, quite old and, and nice and, and fancy. Her eyes were drawn to the magnificent grand castle with its towering spires and beautiful decorations. Lovely. Why is that all a different size? How do I change? How can I, how can I make this bigger? Bigger, please. Bigger. Yes, that looks all right. Fantastic. So, if we have a look at our writing so far, we've got the hypnotic smell of the delicate flowers drifted through the air and into the little girl's nose. A choir of birds sat in the tallest trees, tweeting and singing merrily. Her eyes were drawn to the magnificent grand castle with its towering spires and beautiful decorations. And that is so much better than she could smell the flowers, she could hear the birds, she could see the castle. Every single sentence we've taken it, we've tried to improve it in a little way. So, we're going to stop there. We're not going to try and do any more because I realised that what we were doing there is quite complicated. So, that's what I'd like you to do. I've separated them out now so you can see them. I would like you to do one sentence about what she can smell, one sentence about what she can hear, and one sentence about what she can see. Now, obviously, you can use my ideas down below and just change a few things. If you're feeling a bit more confident, you can have a little go yourself as well okay so well done i'm going to go back up to the picture again as well so you can have a little look so what i want you to do is have a little look have a think and write those sentences okay what we will do next time is we will in carry on and we will do the touch sentence and we'll do the taste sentence and then we'll have a go at doing maybe one of these as well and then we'll end up with a small chunk of uh, writing, which is a setting description, a, a description of the location which she finds herself in. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for joining me on this Monday morning. And the hashtag Say Anne's Live, or you can get us at Twitter at Say Anne's Rainhill. I think I've not got it with me yet. Say Anne's Rainhill. Um, thank you to everyone who sent their writing in. I had a 
influx of emails at the end of last week with loads of year one and year two children send me, sending me their writing, which was brilliant to see, because I've not seen so much of your writing, but thank you for sending it to me finally. It's been really lovely to see. Remember, you can save your writing up and send it to me at the very end, or you can send it to me every single day, whatever you fancy, okay? Well done, guys, and I will see you tomorrow for another reading lesson, and I will see you on Wednesday to carry on this writing. Bye, 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 see you later.